I'm Professor Ben Bickman, biomedical scientist and professor of cell biology. Thanks for joining me. In the lecture today, we are discussing the concept known as the Randall cycle. Now, anytime you hear a name of something, it's named after the person who discovered it or discussed it most thoroughly, perhaps is the better word here. It's also known as the glucose fatty acid cycle. The reason I'm devoting time to talk about this in a metabolic classroom is because it's something that's been used. Uh, it's been invoked, I can, uh, I think, somewhat inappropriately or incorrectly in certain social media um, channels. And so, but it is a, it's an interesting idea. It's one that I think has value in helping us understand metabolism a little better. And of course, hopefully there's some nugget in there that can influence habits to help us, to help you, all of us make better decisions when it comes to nutrition. Now, I'd already mentioned the alternative name, the glucose fatty acid cycle, named after Philip Randall, who first really identified this with his colleagues. Um, this was decades ago in the mid-60s um, at Cambridge. And Dr. Randall and colleagues, when they published some of these papers, and I'll have a link to some uh, really highlighting some of their seminal work in the show notes, um, what they wanted to do was understand fuel utilization in the heart. So it's important to note that that was the model for their experiments. Uh, and, and there may be limitations to this because heart is a unique tissue. Uh, there aren't a lot of tissues that operate metabolically like the heart does. Now, having said that, I don't mean to, I don't mean to cast shade on the idea, on any of the ideas that we're going to discuss. I believe they have value, but we need to appreciate the model, um, which again was perfused hearts from rats. So a, 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 a heart would be uh, surgically removed from the rat and it would be kept alive and beating. So nourished, properly nourished, and then infused with through the blood system with nutrients, of course, glucose and fatty acids, and then analyzing the metabolism of these substrates or what's being used. Now, already I've made, I've mentioned a, a word a couple times that you need to understand, which is fatty acid. We all know what glucose is. Fatty acid is what is used for energy. However, that tissue is pulling it in, whether it's pulling it in as a direct free fatty acid which always is coming from fat tissue, and that becomes an important point that we're going to highlight in this lecture, or whether it's a fatty acid that is pulled off of a triglyceride that is circulating on the blood as it is lumped into a triglyceride-rich lipoprotein like LDL cholesterol or VLDL. Anytime you get a blood test and it's giving you a triglycerides number, the triglycerides are just a part of LDL or VLDL. They're not free circulating molecules like free fatty acids are. So regardless, in the experimental model, they're infusing free fatty acids, which is something I've used in my own experiments. Um, but in the body, just appreciate the fact that those fats that are getting metabolized could be coming from either free fatty acids, which are coming from the fat tissue, the fat cells breaking down their own fat, namely lipolysis, or it's coming from the actions of lipase, which is pulling off a fatty acid from a, a passing triglyceride molecule, which itself is in a, a lipoprotein like LDL or VLDL. 